Coming up on today's Airborne, Senator Jim Inhofe seeks comments on the pilot's Bill of Rights too. NASA declares the LDSD test a success despite a parachute failure. And the FAA issues an SLSA certificate to Quicksilver. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. It's been several decades since some of ANN's leaders suggested the need for a pilot's bill of rights, but Oklahoma Senator Jim Inhofe, who's a member of the Senate General Aviation Caucus, has announced the outline for a follow-on to the original lawmaking. Inhofe has requested the aviation community submit comments for the final Senate legislation. Senator Inhofe said in a news release, quote, the first pilot's Bill of Rights was a victory for the aviation community and made possible by the support of pilots and industry leaders across the nation. Since its implementation, I've heard from the aviation community that more improvements still need to be made to cut red tape." End quote. The goal of the pilot's Bill of Rights, too, is to continue addressing unfair practices and regulations toward the aviation industry. Inhofe will also be hosting a forum at 10 a.m. on August 2nd at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh to discuss the legislation, receive feedback, and take questions. The bill proposes many changes to FAA and other government agency rules and regulations to level the playing field for aviation. Not only does it address unfair government practices, it proposes changes to regulations that will enhance and promote aviation activities. To see a complete outline of Senator Inhofe's proposal, visit www.inhofe.senate.gov. We at ANN cannot overstress the importance of reviewing this proposed legislation and participating in the process. NASA has declared the June 28th test flight of its low-density supersonic decelerator, also called the LDSD, a success despite a parachute failure. This test was the first of three planned for the LDSD project, developed to evaluate new landing technologies for future Mars missions. While this initial test was designed to determine the flying ability of the vehicle, it also deployed two new landing technologies as a bonus. Those landing technologies will be officially tested in the next two flights, involving clones of the saucer-shaped vehicle. The supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, referred to as SIAD, is a large donut-shaped first decelerator technology that deployed during the flight. The second is an enormous parachute called the supersonic disc sail parachute. This device failed to deploy. Regardless of the parachute failure, project manager Mark Adler said, quote, the test vehicle worked beautifully and we met all of our flight objectives. We have recovered all the vehicle hardware and data recorders and will be able to apply all of the lessons learned from this information to our future flights." End quote. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back after these messages. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The FAA has designated Quicksilver's S2SE as an SLSA. Tom Patton explains what this means for the company. The receipt of an airworthiness certificate for its first ever special light sport aircraft, or SLSA, is an important milestone for Quicksilver Aeronautics. This final approval now enables the Southern California producer to begin selling its ready-to-fly models of the iconic aircraft. FAA safety inspectors provided the pink card representing the SLSA airworthiness certificate to Quicksilver President and CEO Ellis Kucha and Chief Operating Officer Dan Perez at the French Valley Airport approximately 10 miles from the company's Temecula, California factory. 
The designation allows the Sport S2SE model to be sold as a fully built light sport aircraft. The company will begin using three manufacturing locations in the U.S., the Temecula headquarters, St. John Airport in Reserve, Louisiana, and in Rochester, Minnesota. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. First thing I'm going to say is read the manuals. You know, I get calls almost weekly from people asking questions about their airplane that they should know and do the research. Most people that sell airplanes are trying to do just that, to sell airplanes. I'm not going to say that some of them misrepresent their product, but sometimes they don't give the customer the kind of information that they need to have. This week, you'll have the opportunity to listen to Jim Scott as he talks about the things you really need to know about LSA ownership. Search Plain Sense and Aero Wisdom on Aero TV's news channel. Here's some good news for tube and rag tail dragger pilots. Lee Bottom Flying Field said that the wood fabric and tailwheel fly-in will return to the banks of the Ohio River in southern Indiana September 19th through the 21st. And none too soon, so we think. Writing on his blog, Nordo News, Lee Bottom Flying Field owner Rich Davidson said, quote, just like previous fly-ins, the field will be open for camping on Friday, which allows you to miss the busy, hectic arrivals the following day. Saturday is the primary day of the event, with Sunday serving as the backup day. All we ask is that you bring your friends. Ultimately, our goal this year is to keep most everything we've offered before, and yet do it in a simpler manner." End quote. This looks like a perfect opportunity to experience flying, as it was in the good old days. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Ben King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. When an airshow accident results in a loss of a life, it's even worse when we find it's plausible this life might have been saved. The Solano County, California coroner said late last week that airshow pilot Eddie Andrini, whose plane went down during an airshow at Travis Air Force Base on May 4th, died of burns suffered in the post-accident fire rather than from the impact. The ruling may have a bearing on a potential lawsuit under consideration by the pilot's family, and may be based on what some say was a slow response time to the accident site by the emergency equipment. The air show was being held at the Travis Air Force Base, and the Air Force was providing emergency response personnel and equipment. It's reported that there were no fire trucks on the scene for three and a half minutes after the accident occurred. The Air Force is now commenting on the response time to the accident, but has offered condolences to Adrimi's family. Excor Aerospace has closed on the acquisition of all operational subsidiaries of Space Expedition Corporation, also known as SXC. The new sales entity, Excor Space Expeditions, will continue to focus on sales, commercial partnerships, and customer training on a global level, and will serve as an open sales channel available for all future XCOR Link's wet lease clients. XCOR CEO Jeff Grayson noted that, quote, for the past two years, SXC has provided XCOR Aerospace with an expanding roster of new customers and commercial partners. As XCOR Space Expeditions, we look forward to making the most of their expertise and insights with customers and commercial partners, end quote. 
Boeing has delivered the 1500 747 to come off the production line to Frankfurt, Germany-based Lufthansa. The milestone airplane is a 747-8 Intercontinental, the 14th that Lufthansa will incorporate into its long-haul fleet. The 747 is the first wide-body airplane in history to reach the 1500th milestone. Its iconic shape makes it instantly recognizable, and passengers have consistently voted it their favorite airplane to fly, according to Boeing. Eric Lindblad, Boeing's commercial airplane's 747 vice president and general manager, said, quote, Reaching this milestone puts the 747 in an exclusive club. I thank all of our employees, suppliers, and customers who made it possible. End quote. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, except this Friday since it's the 4th of July, for a new edition of Airborne. And by the way, there are only 26 more days to Oshkosh, and we'll be there to bring you the most comprehensive coverage in the business. We're getting ready, are you? I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching.